Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you how to add a store to your Web Starts website. Any website that you build with Web Starts can have a fully functional online store. To set this up, go to webstarts.com, click Get Started, it's free, and then choose a template from the template page. You can choose any template that Web Starts offers, but you can also search by the store category if you want to choose a store template. For this demo, I'm going to show you how to add a store to any one of the templates. So I'm going to choose one that's specifically not made for a store. So I'm just going to choose this one right here. So I click on select and then I'm going to complete the signup form. I sign up and in the next step, you'll choose a web address for your website. If you want to use a free account, you need to choose a .webstarts.com address. If you're ready to upgrade to a paid plan, then you can use your very own .com, .org, .net, or other top-level domain name. For this demo, I'm just going to show you what this is like for the free account. So I'm just going to call this adstore.webstarts.com. Notice you can also choose a web address later. So if you are not sure what you want to do, just click choose later. I click continue. Now I'm in the Web Starts dashboard. I'm greeted with the welcome video that shows me how to do some of the basic things to create a website in Web Starts. I went ahead and closed that out. And now you can see I have a thumbnail of my template and I can begin editing it by clicking edit site. My template is loaded into the page editor, and now I can edit this template just by double clicking on the different elements. For example, if I wanted to change it to uh, green products, you know, for my store name, I can just double click in there and I can change that text. I can also do things like double click on the strip and change the image that's in the background. So let me just do that using the image search library. Let me choose another forest pick just for fun. So you can see there that I have swapped out that photo. Let's jump right in and see how we can add a store to this site. To do that, just click on the store icon in the editor. And then in just a few moments, it'll set up your store. As you can see, it says adding store to my site. And now the store is added to my site. Now before we get in here and we look at how to create products or product categories or manage our orders or any other store settings, let's just exit out of this and I want to show you something. If you go to my site now, you'll see that there is a store tab. So when somebody clicks on store, they'll go to my online store. Since I haven't added any products, they're not seeing anything. So let me show you how to add products. You can just click on store again from the sidebar. Click on manage store to see all of the store functions. Click add product. And now we're gonna add our first product. So to do that, I'm going to call this gray backpack. So I enter the title, gray backpack. Then I can enter a description. Then I can click on this icon to add an image. And then I can either upload an image from my local computer, which is the choice that I'm going to select. You can see that'll take just a moment. Or you can also find an image using image search or connecting to your Facebook account or choosing an image that you've already uploaded earlier from the file manager. I click on the thumbnail of the image and then click add images. And then you can see that image is added 
right there to the store. Now, if I have a video of my product, I can click here and I can add a video. Once again, I can either upload that video from my local computer by clicking on the upload icon, or I can find a video for my product on YouTube. And you can do that by searching for your channel name or a specific channel name. So there you can see I click on the channel and I have access to all the videos associated with that channel. Or you can just do a regular keyword search to find your video. But I'm not going to add a video for this product. Next, we're going to choose to add a price. It's going to enter $50. And then if you want to add tax or charge tax on a product, you'll want to check that box. If you do check that box, you'll need to set up your tax rules. Here you can choose to assign a product to a category. I have not created any categories, nor am I going to do that in this video, but if you wanted to, you just click add new category and then enter the category name. And then once the product is assigned to the category it will be found uh, by your shoppers when they they look in that category here i can choose to enable shipping if i enable shipping then i want to make sure that i set up my shipping options under the settings tab so if i do set up shipping on this i'm going to say this is weighs about two pounds that will help determine how much it's going to cost to ship here you have the option to hide a product from your store catalog. The reason why you'd want to hide a product from your store catalog would be if you're offering a price for a product that you don't want to be visible from your catalog. So let's say for example, you send an email out to all of your subscribers, your email list subscribers, offering them this backpack for $25 but you don't want people that come to your store to see the $25 price, you want them to see the regular everyday price of $50, then you would simply hide this product from your store catalog or the version that was $25 you'd hide from your catalog anyway. Here you can choose to set up variants. Variants are things like the size, color, um, those sort of things of your product. This product doesn't come in multiple variants, but you can choose to set up different types of variants. See, you can have size, color, material, that kind of thing. I'm not going to use that in this demo. Inventory management, once again, you enable inventory management. You can display how many of a particular item you have in stock. And then digital delivery is only for products that are being sold digitally. And I'm not going to be selling a backpack digitally since it's a physical item. I click create and then that's going to add my first product. Since I have a product, I can now move back to my store tab and you'll see a product displayed. So now this is viewing my live site under the store tab. There's the product that I created, the backpack. And if you click on the backpack, you'll see the title, the price, the details that I added. And then somebody can choose to add a quantity of the backpack to their cart by clicking the add to cart button. And when they click the add to cart button, then they have the ability to move ahead to check out. If they want to continue shopping, they click the continue shopping button. You can see I can return to my home page, my blog or about, my contact page, they're all there, but they can also navigate to that store. Of course, I've only added one product for this demo, but you can go ahead and fill this up with products and then you'll have an entire online store and have added that to your website. So it's a really helpful feature if you want to sell products online. Let's jump back over into the editor. Take a look at a couple of other things uh, here you can take your online store and you can make changes to the way that your products are displayed. So for example, you can enable the ability to search by category, a search box, or sort by price, that sort of thing. You do that by just checking those boxes. And you do that in each view of your store. You can see up here in the top 
left, I'm working on the store page, but I also have a product page and a cart page. So you can navigate to each one of those pages on their own. Let me show you what the product page looks like. Go ahead and save those changes. And then you can actually make this page look unique in any way you want. You still have the smart drag handles and you can still move things the same way you can on any other page within Web Starts. But if I wanted to add text, for example, I could do that. My text is white, so I gotta make it a color that you can see. Then I could put that here at the top and I'd say, So you might look, like to display a little message up there. You know, maybe you want to add a little bit of padding to the message. And then I can even choose a little, you know, like highlight or background color to just draw attention to it. Maybe I want it to go across the entire top. So now you can see that if I save that change, go to my site, refresh the product page, there you can see that I added that to my site. If I go back out to the store, that message is not visible. Now don't confuse this with changing the description for the product. You can do that just by double clicking on, for, you can do that by clicking on the store icon and clicking manage store. And then of course, selecting the product, that's where you manage the description. You probably noticed that the store tab was automatically added to my menu but it was created as a sub menu just because of the width of the menu on the top of the page. If I drag that out, I can actually allow that to be a primary tab. So here you can see I've expanded the width of my menu and that allows the tab for the store to be displayed on my primary menu. So now when I click on that, I can do that. When you do add a store to your site, one thing that you'll want to add is a checkout or a cart widget. And I like to add it in the top right of my page. So I create a little space by moving those social network icons. Then go over to store, go store widgets, cart widget, and then the cart widget will be added to the page but you want to drag that cart widget into the header of your site. And the reason I recommend that is so that no matter which page of your website somebody is on, if they have an item in their cart, they'll be able to tell and they'll be able to click on this cart widget to go directly to checkout to check out and pay for their items. So I've added that to the header and you could see that it gave me a little message when I added it to the header. Any element you add to this header, which is a section above the dotted line, will appear on every page of your website, provided that the header is enabled because the header can be hidden. But uh, going back over here, and clicking on my cart widget, I can choose that color fill tool and then I can choose to change the colors so they work a little bit better with my website. So I changed it to white from black because I want it to stand out, be very easy to see. Once I save that change, go back out to my live website. You'll see I have a couple of items in my cart. I have two of these backpacks. I'm just gonna reduce that to one. And then no matter whether I'm on my homepage or my blog, or the about page or the contact page, you'll always see I have my easy access to my checkout and my cart with the items that I've selected 
in it. Here you can see going back to the store page. There are a lot more features that the store has to offer. By clicking on the store icon and clicking manage store, you can see those features over here on the left. The most important one that you probably want to pay attention to is the settings tab because that's where you choose your payment processor. For example, we have this account set up with WePay by default, but you can use Stripe, Authorize.net. Uh, you can use other payment processors as well, for example, PayPal. But you set that all up under the settings tab and you'll want to take the time to create your own payment and shipping rules. And I can cover that in another video. But that's it for adding a store to an existing website. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and don't forget to visit webstarts.com to create your very own free website and see more videos like this.